We're back in the booth here at OSCON 2011. Our guests now are Vaibhav Bhandari and Ali Amami of Microsoft's Health Solutions Group. Thanks for joining me here today, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. So we've been hearing a little bit about the health internet here at uh, OSCON when Fred Trotter talked about it this morning. Um, that's the open source direct project. Uh, that's why people are interested in it. And Microsoft's been involved because we've, quote unquote, put it in a box. Can you tell me what that means exactly? Um, sure. So we have been involved with the direct project uh, since the early days when the health and human services department uh, wanted uh, the private industry to come up with a collaborative solution for enabling communications uh, between providers and patients uh, in a secure way. So what we have done is uh, we have implemented uh, in collaboration with Health and Human Services and plethora of other partners uh, a open source solution for this uh, project. Mm -hmm. um, my colleague here, Ali, is one of the developers on this project, and uh, he can also talk a little bit about uh, what direct uh, in the box actually means. Okay. I understand it was uh, built on .NET, is that correct? Um, actually, so the very first implementation, um, part of what Bob mentioned, uh, HHS was looking at proposals from the private industry. Okay. Um, uh, the proposal that today became the direct project um, was the first implementation of that was in .NET. Okay. Um, and so that's what really proved that the technology is possible, that this can enable uh, easy sharing between providers and patients, and patients and providers, and provider mm -hmm. to provider uh, of health information. So that's the .NET stack was the one that really proved it first, but then since then um, there's also been a, an implementation in Java. Okay. Um, and other implementations, because the, the drug protocol itself is a set of uh, standards and protocols. Mm -hmm. Other um, open source or other languages are Possible. So that uh, begs the question, um, what number of implementations are we seeing? What's the uptick on this right now? Uh, today there's only the two implementations mm -hmm. um, that I'm aware of. That there's right. the .NET and there's the Java implementation. Um, we hold regular scrum calls to, to uh, further development and we hold uh, regular bi-weekly meetings to make sure the Java stack and the .NET stack are in line architecturally and from a design perspective. So when we add something in the .NET, implementation. We also um, do our best to add in the Java and vice versa. So we, we, we collaborate pretty regularly to ensure they're, they're both in sync. Um, and as far as uptake of direct, um, that, that's, uh, so currently we're in um, the, the phase of pilots rolling out nationwide. Um, so there's various pilots throughout the country, uh, Rhode Island, Arizona, some in California. Um, and of course there's production systems, uh, personal health record systems like, uh, for, for example, Google Health, Health Vault that, have, that are implementing the protocols um, and enabling real-world provider to patient um, health data exchange, which is very, very exciting. Yeah. Well, in, I, fact, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. in fact, well, Ali, Ali just alluded to this fact. Um, so Google Health users can actually send their health information to Microsoft Health Vault seamlessly, mm -hmm. and the way they are doing it is using the direct protocol. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this has been possible because of consortium of partners and great work uh, which is sponsored by the Health and Human Services uh, and we are able to move users from one provider which is Google Health mm -hmm. to other provider like Microsoft Health Vault by just a click of a button. This is this is really testimony to what the project has has delivered mm -hmm. and this all has been done in, in record time frame where we all know standards take a long time and the implementations follow and they drag, mm -hmm. but the Direct has been an exemplary uh, open source project uh, and it has delivered in record time. That's uh, good news at the moment too, because of course I guess Google Health has been sunsetted, so you're going to be getting a lot of those users, and, you know, potentially. Uh, so how exactly does Direct um, integrate with Health Vault? What have you had to do to make that happen and what does that mean for the, the future of health IT? So Direct um, is a very simple mechanism by which uh, you can send secure email mm -hmm. uh, from providers to consumers mm -hmm. or between providers. So if you see that in context of Health Vault, Health Vault is using the direct stack to enable 
consumers to receive emails from their providers in a secure way. So simply put, a, a user can go up and sign up for a direct email address at healthworld.com um, and a provider can use that email address to send a secure email um, and in this case the email can have their care record, can have a confidential medical information um, and the way they would do that on their side is by implementing the direct stack and creating a trust relationship with Health Vault. And the way we want, we want more providers to enable this. Uh, we currently have um, Care360, um, uh, which is uh, done by Quest, uh, communicating directly with Health Vault, and we want more providers to be able to do that. Mm. Um, and Ali can talk a lot in detail about how how the standards work and how easy it is to kind of have this track just work against with Health World. Sure, yeah. So um, primarily SMIME is the fundamental technology that's, that's used. Um, SMIME is a standard that's been around for 20 plus years, proven, mm -hmm. very secure. Um, however, the, one of the biggest, most cumbersome things with it is it's very hard to exchange certificates. So if I'm a sender, so a, a pair of senders and receivers have to exchange certificates out of band and so um, Alice wants to send a message to Bob, and um, he ha she has to find Bob's certificate. And mm -hmm. so what the direct project has really done, and one of the reasons that the, the uptake has been really successful is we've made it really easy to exchange certificates using mm -hmm. another proven technology, DNS. Um, now, so that's kind of the underlying technology, but in Health Vault specifically, um, well, it's one, of the, one, of, one of the things people mention when they hear, oh, email, it's, people think, oh, that's a step backwards. It's, it's unstructured data. Well, that's actually not true um, because you can, there's a, email also supports this great thing called MIME parts and, and attachments. Um, you can use MIME types and attach. So for example, in the, in the Health Vault case, it's very easy to attach a CCR, a structured CCR to an email message that comes into Health Vault. And what we do on the Health Vault side, so this is the part that's, once the, once the direct stack, the core protocol has picked up the message, we pass it on to some custom services that run in the back end. EMR vendors would do something similar. But in Health Vault, we parse out CCRs and CCDs, NHL7 messages, certain types of HL7 messages, um, and put those directly in the user's Health Vault record. So that's one of the, the customizations that we've made. And so CCRs is a standard that a lot, many hospitals are using. Um, providers that have a trust relationship with Health Vault, very easy to attach CCRs and they come directly in um, into the user's health record. And in fact, that's how Google export um, and import into Health Vault is working today through the CCR mechanism. Got it, thank you for that. So last question. Uh, I was uh, paging through uh, your, what I see you're working on and then you've been sharing how to write a uh, Microsoft 7, um, Windows 7, I should say, mobile app for Health Vault. Um, how do you see, and it looks like there might be iOS and Android apps coming along too, um, how do you see these, this uh, specification in Health Vault integrating within uh, populations increasingly using mobile applications to monitor their own health uh, and use them for sensors, et cetera? Mobile health, or mHealth, as uh, it is referred in the industry, is, is, a, is a great mechanism uh, to get information right in time when things are happen happening and also kind of access that information when you need it. So having applications which use capabilities of the devices like location, cameras, uh, to input rich information into a health record uh, is a great mechanism uh, for a mobile phone. So the way we kind of see it is uh, we have enabled uh, native applications to run on Health World platform and we have, do, we have done open source SDKs, commercial friendly open source SDKs uh, under Apache 2 license for Windows Phone 7, uh, Android and iOS platform. So developers on these platforms can can use this SDK and write native applications which use the rich and compelling uh, UI of these devices and sensors, um, location awareness, cameras, to, to input information into Health World in a secure fashion. On the second side is we are enabling to read this information in a timely way. So. Imagine a case, uh, you are at uh, 
you are at the emergency department and you need to access your allergies and medications. So the, the only way you can do that is either go to web, but if you have a mobile phone and if you log on to your health world record, you can actually get this information right away. Mm. So we are making it easy for you to have this information at your finger trips um, for, for scenarios where you actually need to access your information. And similar to that, applications can, can provide functionality to, to enable timely access of, of uh, their record. And we have several partners uh, who we are working with uh, have released applications on Windows Phone platform. We have applications uh, on the iOS and Android platform uh, being developed by our partners. Um, and what we see is a rich ecosystem of uh, not only the consumption of the data, but also input for this data. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if Ali, you want to add yeah. something to it. Um, so I think that one of the really, to echo kind of Vibov's comments, um, input and output of data, the, one of the really unique things with Health Vault is the fact that um, you can write these applications um, that uh, can, well, on the input side, multiple, de multiple devices or multiple sensor networks. You can use the example of a Fitbit device or a Y Things scale, mm -hmm. can both input data into Health Vault, and the patient gets that data in their, in their record. Now on the reading side, you can have an, an application that aggregates that data. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about sensor networks. Now you can start aggregating data and correlating things that may not be possible if you're, you're trying to update data to uh, just a single siloed uh, web service. So those are some of the really unique uh, use cases that I think Health Vault's enabling um, today. Great. Sounds like your platform's getting some uptick. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much for both of you for joining me today and talking a bit about the Direct Project and Health Vault and how it's all coming together. Look forward to coming back in a year and seeing what's happened since. Thanks, Alex. Take care. Thanks a lot, Alex. All right.